Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and this is a bicycle. I'm working on a project where I make a portable radio setup for a bicycle to include an antenna. And the fine folks over at Larson Antennas, or also known as Pulse Electronics, they sent me a couple of these NMO 270Bs, 2 meter 70 centimeter antennas with an NMO mount with a power rating up to 100 watts. So I am going to give one of these away to one of my channel members in a future episode. However, today I wanted to test out this and see exactly how well this performs over to something like a normal handheld radio, a quarter wave antenna, and then this being a 5 ace wave antenna. How will it do? Let's take a look at it first. So this is the Larson antenna once it's fully installed. There's not much to it, but people might ask, where is this made? Larson antenna, at least this one, made in the USA. Not only this one that I tested, but each and every current Larson antenna is made here in the USA. How much gain do you get with the two meter, 70 centimeter collinear antenna from Larson? 1.6 dB on two meters and 3.5 dB is what's reported for 70 centimeters or for UHF. And I just wanna mention that I'm referencing things in dB, which DBD and not DBI. If you want the DBI values, you could just look on the website or add 2.15 to the numbers I just gave. When you get the Larson antenna, you might see inside of the package that there's multiple other packages. And within those packages, you might find little rubber washers to place inside of here or over here so that when you screw this into your NMO mount, you don't get water or moisture inside of the mount itself. And since the Larson antenna that we're talking about is good for up to 100 watts, it should work just fine with my Yaesu FTM 400. Let's go ahead and hook this antenna up to the truck and do a couple readings to make sure that the standing wave ratio looks good on both UHF and VHF, and then we'll test it out. I should also mention that the total length is about 34.5 inches, and this antenna does not have any kind of system here where you could pull the antenna down if you were to go in a parking garage. So if you went into a parking garage, you'd just have to remove it. If any of you are inquiring, uh, Motorola XPR5550 and the Yaesu FTM400. Now all I'm doing here is I'm checking my standing wave ratio and I'm using the Nano VNA because it has UHF. And just jumping over to UHF here, it looks like at 440.0, I start somewhere around 1.8 to one, but there's a dip and right at 440, 446.2 is probably its lowest point at about 1.5 to 1. Real quick, I'm gonna check you know, my impedance values as well as my reactance and just check to see if that's all relatively okay. Uh, this is actually really cool and interesting because I have this opportunity at this point to test UHF and it seemed fine. My impedance values, my reactance values were fine. My standing wave ratio looked okay. And I think that's important for us to mention is when you're checking any antenna, it's not just about having a low SWR number. It's about checking your impedance to make sure it's close to 50 ohms. Uh, and you'll see here in just a minute, some things can get interesting, but then also your reactance and you want to try to keep your reactance as close to zero as possible. Now I decided at this point to hook up my MFJ model 226, which is a graphical impedance analyzer that does a decent job and it's really easy to use. Subsequently, it goes up to 229 megahertz. So not only did I test two meters, but I said, you know what? Let's see how it looks on uh, the 220 band or 1.25 meters. So let's start with two meters here. First thing that I notice we see is, um, yeah, we're at about 1.3 to one standing wave ratio at 144 megahertz. We dip somewhere around 146 megahertz national calling frequency, 1.18 to one. And then we're back up to about 1.28 to one at 148 megahertz. Now I did the test this originally too. And this next thing I'm about to show you is the impedance value. There was impedance at 50 ohms the first time I tested, but now I'm not seeing that. Now, now I see impedance values at around like 46 ohms, maybe uh, 43 ohms, 43 ohms. And that's constantly changing because again, I think my environment changing has to do with when you test me, you probably should be in an open area, no electronics, maybe even not, not your radio on or your, uh, your vehicle on. But uh, this is what I saw. And so, yeah, I was down to 40 at some points here in the band, and I went up to 46, then back down to around 40. Uh, and my reactance is kind of uh, about five 
1.46 ohms at the start. We dip down to about 1.73 ohms, and then we're up to X equals 2.19. Now, um, I would say, well, is there an intermittent short in my coax? And I, the answer is no, because I think my impedance values would be all over the place and not such a smooth line. Again, I don't know, and that's what makes this fun is kind of like learning a little bit about it. But it, it would just appear to me that I was probably in a bad environment or bad area, especially because I tested with multi, multiple meters, and I didn't really have too much of an issue. Now, um, this is kind of where it gets really cool because I had the opportunity to test on the 220 band or 1.25 meters. And yeah, that doesn't look like anything at the moment. But then we look, look at the standing wave ratio. This is a good example, 1.43 to 1. And we go to the middle of the band, uh, 1.39 to 1 at 222. And at the end of the band, which is 225, we're at 1.35 to 1. Things look pretty good right there. Let's take a look at the impedance values. And you know what? I probably would at least try this. And you know what? In fact, let's go try this in just a minute. But our impedance to start is around 69 ohms. And we then start to dip. We see 66 ohms in the middle of the band, 64 ohms. And then by the end of the band, we're down to about 53 ohms. So... You know, realistically, what's our reactance to kind of see uh, at the end there? Negative 15, X equals negative 15. And do we have anywhere where X equals zero? Uh, call it right around here. So 221.3. I don't know that this would be a completely efficient antenna with 220. And I guess the best way to find out would be to hook up a radio uh, also maybe put a SWR meter in line if you don't have one on your radio. My thought is, is uh, if this antenna isn't efficient and isn't good, as we increase our power transmitting, we'll see the standing wave ratio climb due to, you know, maybe like reflected power coming back into the radio or some, some issues like that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and just test a couple of things and we'll get to testing 1.25 meters as well. You know, and I love this community because uh, there'll be comments in, in the, the comments below that are actually really helpful and say, hey, well, you know, you, what if you do this or that? Or, uh, yeah, that doesn't look good for reactants on 220. And a lot of these things, you know, I, I kind of already have an assumption, but I'd like to hear what you all say. So if you have any input, let me know below. But if you're just going to be like, oh, this is horrible and I didn't learn anything and not provide a solution, well, then uh, what are you doing there? Yeah. <laughs> You're not helping the cause at, at all. At least I gave it an effort. For VHF, I've just set it to NOAA Weather Radio 162.475. And the reason I did that is it's a consistent stream of FM radio. But also, there's nobody on the, the bands at the moment. Let me just see what it's going to sound like on the ocean. And of course, we're in the car, so the antenna is already severely limited. But uh, I don't even pick it up in the car, to be honest with you. So my ocean antenna in HD, right, is a little bit worse than my quarter wave. And keep an eye on that here. We're right about the two for signal strength, and it keeps cutting in and out. Finally, let's hook up this antenna from Larson and see if it makes any difference. Light rain. Here is your forecast for Rockford and surrounding communities. For rest of today, new This repeater is in Elkhorn, Illinois, uh, Elkhorn, Wisconsin, actually, and it's uh, kind of far away. So we're going to try with the quarter way first. This is W9FFF testing. All right, very good. Uh, I'm going to switch it down here real quick to low power, and we'll see if that makes any significant difference. Give me just a second. This is W9FFF testing again on the quarter wave antenna on low power. You're making it, but you're pretty weak. All right, great. Thank you, uh, NQ9R from W9FFF. I'm going to switch over to the 5 a antenna at this, at this moment. Give me just a second. NQ9R from W9FFF, high power. Any difference? Yeah, you're noise free. It's pretty good. All right, W9FFF operating low power uh, uh, up to Elkhorn, Wisconsin from McHenry. Roger, copy. This is NQ9R. Uh, your signal is weaker. There's a little hiss on it, but it's quite readable. 
So the thing about my two meter quarter wave antenna that I built is it's also resonant uh, around the repeater frequencies in my area for UHF or 70 centimeters. And with that, I went ahead and I was testing the receive capabilities of the quarter wave as opposed to the Larson. I did try to make contact with people, but unfortunately, UHF is kind of dead in our area. So I could tell you this, the receive capabilities of the Larson antenna is significantly better than the antenna that I built. This is W9FFF testing uh, another antenna. Is there anybody out there for this call? Nothing heard. W9FFF clear. This is W9FFF uh, testing on UHF. Is there anybody out there in order to answer this call? Nothing heard. W9, FFF, I'll be clear. Hey, good morning. It's W9, FFF, and I'm testing out a couple new antennas. Is there anybody out there to take this call? Nothing heard. W9, FFF, clear. This is W9FFF. One more test. I uh, just got another antenna on here and I'm testing the receive of this repeater from uh, McHenry. W9FFF clear. But anyway, we're on high power on that frequency. And this is W9FFF testing. Uh, is there anybody out there uh, for a radio check? Nothing heard, W9, FFF, I'll be clear. Putting out right about 40 watts on a, a really low SWR because the antenna is proficiently forming, performing. But now what would happen if we did hook up this 220 radio here, which, hey, our standing wave ratio looks pretty good. But uh, we're on 1.25 meters here on high power, which should be about 60 watts. And this is W9, FFF testing, W9, FFF clear. Uh, again, VHF and UHF looked fine as far as the standing wave ratio goes and uh, putting power through this radio. Now, on 220, yeah, it was about 4 to 1 standing wave ratio with 40 watts of power, not 60 watts, but 40 watts of power going through it. So that's that's high. Uh, maybe that's something I could correct. I'm going to look into that a little bit further. Uh, but initially, I would say even though... 220 looks good it doesn't actually perform as well as it should and that has to do with the impedance being up around maybe even 70 ohms right and reactance and so forth so again it's not just about that standing wave ratio number but a totality of things i do want to point out that there are antennas that as you increase your price will increase your performance i have an example of one over here on the vehicle's left on my right the problem with that though also is like the one here, great antenna, but very heavy. And that standard NMO mount that's on there at highway speeds, that thing fluctuates quite a bit. And I just don't like that because I don't want to have to worry about jumping out of my car if I get on the highway, unscrewing it and so forth. Uh, very lightweight with that Larson antenna. And I think that that is a happy medium. Now you might ask about prices for the Larson antennas and Larson antennas are sold in multiple places. I can think of DX engineering I can think of gigaparts, probably HRO and other places. But there are a few places out there that I think Amazon actually is charging $120 for that antenna right there. Now that is not a $120 antenna. Look for prices somewhere around $75 to $80, I believe. In fact, I'll put in a link below to different sources of decent deals for the Larson antennas. Ultimately, I want you to get the best deal for yourself. What does that mean? I want you to choose what you think is going to be or who you think is going to be the best company to purchase this antenna from. And that actually doesn't always play into factor of who's the cheapest. Sometimes it's a matter of, well, this company has done really well for me in the past. I support them or this company's just getting started and I, I, I like to help support the little companies. I don't care who you buy from. I don't have any affiliation with any of these companies, although, you know, it'd be kind of cool. 
But what I will tell you is this right now, I do have an affiliation with Amazon. So if you were to purchase through the Amazon link that I'll provide below as well, I might make a dollar or 30 cents or whatever it is, a small commission based upon that sale. But the Amazon link is a little bit more expensive as we're going to see right here. Starting here at Arcadian Antenna or arcantenna.com, we're going to see their price is $77.75 for the NMO270B. 270 And I just went through some of these specifications. I think I hit on everything here, but to recap, center loaded half wave on VHF, collinear on UHF. Now, uh, maximum power 100 watts. So I think we got everything here with the exception of the Comet SBB5. And it says it's the equivalent to the Comet SBB5. It's pretty close, right? They're talking about performance wise, and I would, we're going to test that later. Uh, but remember, the Comet uh, SBB5 does have the fold down antenna where the Larson does not. And I just want you to be very aware of that. Now, other than that, though, uh, 7775, if we go over to DX Engineering, they're the ones at $122. And again, I'm not trying to put them down. DX Engineering is a great company. And maybe this is some kind of mistake. Uh, other than that, though, Larson Antennas on Amazon, which is actually sold through Gigaparts, is $84.95. And if you just go to Gigaparts' website directly, it's $77.95. And then you'll probably pay shipping unless you find you know an extra $25 for free shipping or whatever. But uh, the other place is Ham Radio Outlet, $79.95. And to conclude here, $77.95 at CheapHam.com reach out to one of those companies that I just showed you. And if you have any questions, ask them about the antenna and see how they react and respond to you. Do they give you the customer service you think you want? And if you still can't get the answer, maybe contact Larson Antenna. I think you'll find that they're down to earth people more than happy to help. Again, thank you to Larson Antenna for sending me these antennas and I uh, hope you have a good one. I'm Ham Radio Dude. 73. I think there's a lot of people selling their houses in the neighborhood and that's why there's all these cars going by but um, probably think i'm the crazy ham guy <laughs>